Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. A video that's coming about solely because having one fish tank in my entire fish room that is not hooked up to the auto overflow system is really beginning to bother me. Uh, I know it shouldn't, <laughs> but it does. So I need to drill that tank. So what I thought I would do is I'd show you uh, methods for drilling tanks. Uh, this is what I used to use when I had a client who wanted an existing aquarium drilled. And so it it's either got fish in it or it is a pre-made aquarium. What I would do is I had a handheld battery operated drill uh, that would fit in that bracket you see, the one that slides back and forth, and then I would clamp it into place with uh, the bolts and uh, I would mount that to the side of the aquarium, lower the water level, and it was really great. Uh, it drilled really well, but unfortunately in the years that have gone by now that drill no longer works. So I'm going to show you another way of doing it that doesn't require any fancy tools or anything and something that you can actually do uh, freehand and pretty much guarantee the fact that you are uh, not going to crack your tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, these are three quarter inch pieces of plywood and I'm going to take two of them and I'm going to glue them together and then I'm going to drill a hole through it and as we progress you'll see how that's going to work. So this is the one undrilled tank. If you remember, I'm putting together an auto Daphnia culturing system, which is working really quite well. But as it overflows, it, it goes into this aquarium, and I have to remember <laughs> to drain it. And that's the, my dilemma. So what I'm going to do here is I just took a pitcher, uh, hooked up one of those rocks I put together for air. And this, if you remember from a while back, is a valve I put together for... Uh, an airline just to keep you know if you want to regulate how much air you're going to put in a tank and I borrowed all those bits and pieces so I can drip water into this and you'll see how that's going to go together here shortly. Now before we get into this too far if you can the way I recommend drilling aquariums is buy the glass uh, use either a drill press or some other system uh, to hold the glass perfectly flat on a nice soft surface, uh, plywood's really good, and then drill it before you build the aquarium. That is the best way, because that way you can drill from both sides, it almost completely eliminates any kind of shelling, and then of course the next best thing is building yourself a little bit of a drill press like I had there, the one that's plastic, that you can actually mount to the side of the aquarium and drill it that way. Now, that unfortunately requires uh, tools, and it's not something that you can really easily make uh, in a, you know, just with, you know, the usual stuff that people have uh, for getting work done around the house. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a cheap alternative. I've seen a number of videos where people drill tanks uh, and they're drilling them, just holding the drill in place freehand, and if you have a really sharp drill bit and you have a steady hand, uh, that is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not the best. Uh, so this is an easy way of uh, ensuring that you're not going to get too much shelling and hopefully no cracking whatsoever. So because you can't take a diamond corbett and run it through plywood with any kind of ease, I am using a drill bit here. This is just under uh, an inch by I think a uh, sixteenth. Uh, you see me use it for acrylic all the time. Uh, this one I use to drill the hole and then I put one inch in to uh, make sure the hole is nice and smooth for the friction fits that I do. And in this case, I'm going to drill this hole in and then I'm going to put in the diamond bit and it will pretty much just sand out the inside of it and make sure that I have a really tight fit. Now I used to buy, uh, when they were available, I don't think they're even available anymore, these really good diamond bits uh, and the diamond bits had uh, the outside diameter was consistent from one like all the way through it, it was really they're really good bits and they're actually really good for this kind of drilling unfortunately uh, I haven't found anything like it anymore I mean they just don't seem to exist uh, it doesn't really matter so much because I don't really drill a whole lot of tanks anymore uh, there are much easier ways of doing these sorts of things, and I only really did it because a lot of people in those days 
wanted everything to be completely hidden and it was easier just to drill the tank. But you'll see on the bottom lip of this where the diamond bits are, that is a larger diameter than the surrounding materials above it. And that is a bit of an issue because you'll have a small amount, of, admittedly, but you'll have a bit of free play uh, when you have this in a handheld drill. The end piece will be snug and the shaft will be a little bit wobbly. Now with water in there, it should mitigate that quite a bit and it can, you have to have a steady hand anyway, uh, but it's something to keep an eye on. Now I need to add water to this. It's, well the particular drill that I have here says you don't need water, but I have always used water when drilling glass. Uh, it keeps it cooler and you don't want the glass to heat up. So this is going to be a channel, it's going to go down to that hole and this is how I'm going to add water into it to keep it cool and I don't have to, you know, pay attention to what's going on for that. I can just focus my entire attention on uh, drilling the hole and that's actually really kind of important. So there we are, I've drained, the, well actually I saw this part, I've already drained the water down. Uh, these are glued together and you can see the hole, it goes down into the channel there. And I'm going to clamp this one on the outside and the third piece is going to go on the inside. The reason for this is, um, because I'm clamping these into place, it's going to give a nice firm support for the glass. Because there really is no support for this. If I drilled this freehand without it, I'm putting a lot of pressure on uh, one particular spot on the tank. So this will uh, alleviate that, it will spread the force out over the whole end piece. One other important detail I want to cover before I forget. When you're drilling an aquarium that's freestanding like this, uh, even with the, if it doesn't have water in it, don't drill too close to any given edge. Uh, you'll notice the tanks up above here uh, I've drilled. Uh, it's one inch uh, between the edge of the hole and the edge of the glass, and that is really quite close. Uh, they were all drilled uh, before assembly, and it was much simpler to do it that way. And of course it gives me better viewing space and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I don't recommend that for uh, like a free hold one. This one here is two inches to any given edge and if I remember correctly from when I used to order glass um, the rule of thumb that the factory uses for drilling is uh, I think it's one and a half times the diameter of the drill hole that you're making uh, but that is also because a lot of the stuff I ordered uh, is tempered and they tend to lose a lot of stuff in the oven if the, there's not enough edge to it there, so that might be part of it as well. So anyway, I'm going to put in the hose here, it's going to start dripping shortly, it's going to go down to the tray below, and uh, just a simple matter of having a steady hand at this point and uh, drilling the hole. Uh, there really isn't, I'm going to cut most of this out because uh, there really isn't that much to it really. Uh, I was a little slow in the beginning starting this because I wanted to make sure that the hole uh, got fully lubricated with the water and also wanted to, sometimes when you buy drill bits they'll have a little bit of a coating on it uh, just because they don't want it to rust or whatever so I also wanted to wear that off. So initially I was a little slow starting it and I wasn't putting any pressure on, I kept the RPMs uh, fairly low. You should probably do that anyway, because a high-speed drill like this, uh, it's not a good idea to run at full speed. Uh, it, diamond bits actually don't really require that. Uh, slower RPMs are actually better. So about a third to a half of uh, what the, the drill is capable was uh, much better. So one of the things I noticed while doing this, it actually wasn't hard to hold it. Uh, so as you can see, it's quite steady here. It was, wasn't hard to hold it in place, uh, it didn't wobble much, but this drill bit is really terrible. <laughs> Actually, that's probably being unfair. Uh, I'm kind of spoiled with some of the materials I get to use, uh, but this is a relatively new thing that I've bought, and compared to what used to be available uh, when other countries besides uh, the Orient made things, um, they're higher quality and it's just night and day to use them. So anyway, you just push pressure on and take it out, let it cool and back and forth until you end up with a nice little core bit. And there you go. That is a chunk of glass. And I'm going to show you at the end here, uh, I'm going to
to go and show you uh, how much shelling happened. Uh, not much actually, I was actually rather happy with that. Even with um, the poor quality of the drill bit, it is brand new. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to drill uh, as time goes on, uh, but for the moment it is actually sharp enough to do this job, which is pretty much all I could ask for. Actually, all I really wanted was to make sure I didn't crack the tank because I didn't have any other tanks in this size uh, that I could hook up for here. So I'd have to make a whole new tank just to keep it even, but uh, that's just that's just too much. So I'm glad it didn't crack. So this is going to get hooked up, and I'm not going to put that in this video. Uh, probably be in one of the Sunday videos. And then I can start doing uh, the auto overflow systems for uh, raising the daphnia. So one of the things that happens on the backing here is if the drill bit is either being pushed too hard or it's old, and you'll end up with shelling, which is just basically little shells of glass that, are, that break off the back end. And I didn't get much of that, so I kind of guess I have to dial back a bit of my dislike for this drill bit. Uh, it did the job and it gave me a good hole. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of shelling there, but it's really minuscule. And for a handheld uh, drill, uh, this is actually more than fine enough. It was just a little slower than, like I said, drilling it in a, in a press. But this is good enough. So anyway, as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. They'll be much appreciated. And let me know what you think about this. As, uh, as you can see here, there doesn't seem to be any damage done to the drill bit, which is nice. Uh, means I can drill more holes with it. And I'm going to show you the, the core, and I said it is more than good enough. So <laughs> maybe you shouldn't listen to my poor opinion of it. Uh, it is, uh, it did the job, and that's pretty much all I can ask. So there you go, a little bit of shelling. Um, I think I might try that drill bit out on a piece of glass, just a scrap piece of glass, and see if I can get a better job on the drill press. Uh, we'll see if I can get around to that. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.